Hello and thank you for joining me. Glad to see you. So, my name is David and I'm an historian and I'm really interested in understanding how the movement of people in the past shaped our communities today. And joining us today for this lesson is Doc from the Counter Cats and he's got some questions for you during our lesson. And there's Doc. If you've been doing some of Let's Count's activities, you'll have seen them before and Doc absolutely loves history. So, what is the census? 2021 is a census year and census day is Sunday, the 21st of March, 2021. The census is a snapshot of England and Wales that happens every 10 years. The census records all sorts of information, such as where everyone is, who they are, where they come from, what jobs they do. This lesson is on diversity, history and the census. Now, we've been holding the census in Britain since 1801. It's become one of the most useful tools for government to plan for the future, but also for historians to find out all about the past. The census has always asked people where they were born, but it didn't ask questions about people's ethnicity or their race until 1991, so very recently. When the adults in your family fill in the census questionnaire, you are helping add to this important historical record. Doc has a question for you. Consider the five words and phrases below. Have you heard them before? What do you think they mean? Equality, representation, diversity, ethnicity and race, and birthplace. Take a minute and talk among yourselves and see how many of those you can come up with a definition of. How did you do? Well, let's see what they mean. Here's Doc again. Equality. That's knowing the ways in which people are different, but also at the same time, making sure that they are valued and included fully and fairly in everyday life. So we are equal. Representation. Representation is about how visible different groups are in everyday life. Do all groups get to have a say in how things are run? Do we learn about their lives, their history and their interests? Or are these things overlooked by some groups of other people? Diversity. We all come from different cultural and racial backgrounds. We may speak a range of languages, we may have different religions and may have different customs and traditions, such as our names, the cultural celebrations that we take part in, our favourite foods and our popular games. We call this diversity. Ethnicity and race. Now, historians are still debating and discussing the differences between the two. But our ethnicity is something that's shaped by our culture. This means 
things like the languages we speak, the religions we believe we might have, and the customs and traditions that we might take part in. But that's not the same as race, because when we speak about race, we are usually speaking about physical things, things like skin colour and hair texture and facial features. Birthplace. Well, this is a simple one. It's the city or the town or the village or the country where you were born. Today's activity is about a group of people from history who were known as the Lascars. Let's find out about them in today's activity. We're going to bring together two important stories using the census. There's the story of the Lascars themselves and, the, and their presence in England and Wales. But there's also the story of how historians use the census along with other historical sources to help us better understand the history of England and Wales and to make the lives and the contribution of people from different ethnic backgrounds visible. Here's Doc and he has a question for you. Their story will tell us a great deal about Britain and the Empire and the movement of goods and people in both directions. The Merchant Navy and its sailors from the British colonies. The role of campaigners and charities in supporting visitors and immigrants to England and Wales. And how communities change. Here's Doc again. Doc's question is this, have you heard of the Merchant Navy and do you know what it does? Have a think about that for later on. In this lesson, we're also going to learn how to think like an historian. We're going to follow a trail of historical evidence to find out all about the Lascars. Historical trails can include things like the census records, newspaper articles, paintings, drawings, photographs, maps, stories and books. All of these things you can see are historical evidence that we can use in our trail. Here's an example of the Lascars appearing in the census of 1911, so 110 years ago. This document is part of the census entry for a ship that was at Cardiff docks on the 2nd of April 1911, which was the census day that year. The master, or the captain, the first mate and the engineers on board this ship all have traditional British family names and first names. Among the ship's crew are many men with names that indicate that they are of Indian heritage. Here's Doc again. The census has always been interested in people's birthplaces. But, and here's his question, why might the birthplace of someone not be a reliable clue when historians are trying to learn more about their race and ethnicity in the UK population? This is a grid of those names that were in that census return from 1911. They're much easier to read here. And what you can see is that the master, the first mate, the second engineer and the third engineer all have traditional English, uh, British first names and family names. And you can see that all of them speak English as their language and all of them under nationality are British. But two of them have been born in Scotland and the master, the captain of the ship, had been born in the West Indies and the third engineer had been born in Calcutta. But there are four other men listed here as among the crew, and three of them are under occupation described as Lascars. So Lascars, being a Lascar is a job. There's also one man who's described as a Sarang, and all four of them are Indian under their nationality, and they speak a language called Hindustani, and they'd all been born in Calcutta or Kuli in India. Here's Doc again. This is his question. We know what job the ship's captain is, 
But what sort of job is a Lascar? What do Lascars do? Searching for the word Lascar in newspapers and magazines from the 1900s and the 1800s gives us some clues about what the job of the Lascar was, where in the world they came from, why some Lascars were on board a ship during the census of 1911, and how people who were Lascars were sometimes treated by others. What clues does this short newspaper report give us? The title of the report is Cruelty to Lascars, and it says that a verdict of manslaughter has been returned against Captain Rowles of the Bark, which is a name for a ship, called the New Liverpool, at an inquest about the body of a Lascar seaman, which was concluded in Southampton. And he died from a disease called sea scurvy, and that was caused by having a low quality diet that didn't give him succulent vegetables and the substitutes of lemon or lime juice. So he's died of this disease scurvy because his diet was so bad. He wasn't given the foods he needed to keep him well. So he wasn't being treated well. Remember earlier we talked about the Merchant Navy? Well, the Merchant Navy played a critical role in the story of the British Empire because raw materials and manufactured goods, along with people, all circulated around the empire. And trading ships that were part of the Merchant Navy came to rely on recruiting sailors from the empire to work on their ships. Indian sailors were known as Lascars, and they were first employed by the East India Company in the 1600s. And the word became used for sailors from other parts of the world. And sometimes a third, one in three, of all the crew on a ship might have been Lascars. Here's Doc. Doc's question is this. What kinds of raw materials and manufactured goods do you think were important to people's lives in the 1800s and the early 1900s? So this is a list of raw materials and manufactured goods. Can you spot any wrong answers? Take a moment and talk among yourselves and with your partners and see if you can spot those wrong answers. Here's Doc. Which are the wrong answers? Yes. Only two of them were wrong. That's interesting. All of these other things were manufactured goods and raw materials that were part of people's lives in the empire. Velcro and iPads were not. Lascar came to be used to describe any sailor who was non-European. And Lascar sailors often spent long periods of time in British ports waiting to get another job on a ship. They waited so long that some settled down in these ports. They got married to local women, they had children, and they raised their families. But Lascars were often poorly treated, both at sea and on land. And we can find out more from newspaper stories about this if we look again into the archives. This is the new story, a new story from 1855 of 21 Lascars who came to the UK as crew members on a ship called the Janet Mitchell. The ship had sailed from Calcutta in India to Melbourne in Australia, to Mauritius in Africa, and then to Bristol. But when it arrived in Bristol, the ship's owner didn't pay the wages of the Lascar sailors. And the Lascars took legal action. They went to court and they summoned the owner, who was John Mitchell of Glasgow, before the Bristol Magistrates Court. But he sent the ship's master, Captain Hutton, in his place. Mr Yardley, who was the magistrate, ordered that the owner pay the missing wages, but he just ignored that court order. So the Lascars were brought to London to continue their legal challenge there. In court in London, 
Captain Hutton said that the owner had decided to take the Lascars as passengers and to pay their wages from their original journey to Bristol once they got there. The Lascars and the magistrate, magistrate said that the money should be paid in England, and Lieutenant Colonel Robert Marsh Hughes of the East India Company and founder of the Strangers' House in Limehouse supported the Lascars in court. Mr William Glazier, an interpreter, helped the Sarang of the Lascars to prevent to present his evidence to court. And that helps us know what that word Sarang meant. Sarang was the leader, the, the leader of a group of Lascars. He was the one who was in charge of them. The Sarang told the court that they still hadn't got their wages and that their clothes were being held by the ship's captain. This newspaper report tells us that in the end, the owner of the ship ignored the court and the ship sailed to India without the Lascars. They weren't paid and even worse, their clothes were thrown into the dock. That's very cruel. They had nowhere to go, so they were taken to the Poplar Workhouse until the East India Company could return them to India. Let's follow the trail and search the archives for images of the stranger's home that was mentioned in that newspaper report. Here's a picture of a very big building, the stranger's home in Limehouse, which was on West India, West India Dock. And here's a picture of the main hall of the stranger's home in 1902, so just a couple of years earlier, a couple of years later, I should say. And look at those people. They look very different from one another because they're from all over the world, all over the British Empire. Now the Strangers Home was, a, sorry, the Strangers Home Society was a charity that was founded by Robert Marsh Hughes of the East India Company and Joseph Slater of the London City Mission. And the first donation, the first money to help set it up, came from Maharaja Durleep Singh, who was an Indian prince who was exiled in Britain. Here is a picture of the laying of the foundation stone when the stranger's home was first built in 1856. Have a look at that picture. It's an engraving from a newspaper because newspapers in 1856 couldn't print photographs, so they had to have engravings like this produced. Now, the charity that built the stranger's home for Asiatics, Asians and South Sea Islanders did, built it on the West India Dock Road in Limehouse in London. That's near a place called Canary Wharf today. The foundation stone was laid by Prince Albert in 1856. Prince Albert was married to Queen Victoria. And that was a year after our Lascars in London appeared in that newspaper report. And the home opened in 1857, and it was eventually closed in 1937. Take a closer look at the engraving of the laying of the foundation stone of the stranger's home. When we think about the Victorian and the Edwardian ages, tracing stories like those of the Lascars from the census and out into other historical sources like newspapers and pictures and engravings, it helps us make the presence and the contribution of people from diverse backgrounds to the history of Britain much more visible. We can see the Lascars and the role they played in the story of Britain in the past. And it helps us reimagine how we tell stories about our shared history and our long, diverse culture. Here's the trail that we followed. We started with that census return. And that led us to our first newspaper report, which led us to our second newspaper report about the court case, which led us to the engraving of the opening of the, the Home for Strangers, which led us to the photographs of the Strangers' Home in Lime, Limehouse, and that photograph of the inside and all of the people from all over the empire trying to get help inside the Strangers' Home. So, what can you do next? The newspaper story, The Lascars in London, shows us that the Lascars stood up for their rights and they had support from individual people, but also from organisations like the charity that built the Strangers' Home. 
why don't you write a diary of one of the Lascars, maybe the Sarang, during their ordeal? How might he have felt? What did he do to stand up for the Lascars, the men who looked up to him? Do you think that they all went back home to Calcutta in the end, or might some of them have stayed in London? And if they did, what might they have done next? You can visit the website of Our Migration Story to learn more about the Lascars who did stay in Britain. You could read a report about a Lascar sailor who was on the wreck of the Sydney Cove. That was a famous shipwreck in the 1790s. This is a report by the maritime archaeologist Dr Jesse Ransley. The link for both of these can be found under this video. Here's some other suggestions from Doc. After this lesson, find out about the census. How does the census ask people about their ethnicity? Gather your findings, gather your findings in an information text. Use the NOMIS website to search the 2011 and 2001 census database. Follow the link below this video to find the NOMIS user guide on the Let's Count website to access local census data. Can you find and compare the census data on ethnicity in the area around your school in 2001 and then 10 years later in 2011? Thank you so much for taking part. Please ask an adult at home to fill in the census on the 21st of March so we can all together help shape the future.